Hello everyone and welcome to Extreme League Wrestling. We are hit with some shocking breaking news at this time as WWE has announced releases of several major superstars. It had been announced today on his own personal social media accounts that Mustafa Ali was no longer working with WWE. This is off the tales with a very contentious relationship with Mustafa and WWE staff, with Mustafa Ali previously a few years ago asking for his WWE release but WWE not granting that and moving him down to NXT and giving him a little bit more airtime. Things seem to be working well for Mustafa Ali in NXT with him constantly being in the North American title picture. These positive signs unfortunately came to a screeching halt in the past few weeks as Mustafa Ali's new political-based character was dropped from NXT TV, and he has not been seen for the past few weeks. With WWE finally releasing Mustafa Ali, this really does feel like a blessing in the skies for the guy, really just because he had been unhappy in WWE for some time, and he was very vocal about it on social media. And with this new merger of the TKO group between the UFC and WWE, we knew talent releases were going to be coming. We just didn't expect them this soon after one week when they let go of 100 office workers. Reports have also come out about Vince McMahon's backstage attitude and about his cult of personality and ego growing bigger and bigger with the TKO merger. Even though he is not in charge, he still views the fact that the company is his and that he can do whatever he wants and that he is owed people's respect. Unfortunately, after the announcement of Mustafa Ali's departure from WWE, we are also learning about multiple other superstars including Elias, Emma, Riddick Moss, Rick Boogs, Top Dalla and Aaliyah. While no one should ever lose their job, a lot of these talents haven't been used on WWE TV in quite some time, but some of them truly are shocking given Triple H's uh, influx back of people who were under his power in NXT and people that he brought up to the main roster who later got released by Vince McMahon. It had been announced that Elias had been no longer under a professional contract, whatever that might mean in the world of WWE. Personally for me, I thought he was maybe moving into a coaching role, possibly with NXT, but we look at some of these other names like Emma and Top Dollar, like people who were being brought back by Triple H to fill out the mid card whenever he took control uh, over Vince McMahon uh, when he departed the company late in 2022. I think it's not too secret of a thing that WWE's mid card tends to be a bit thin, and unless they can work a program with Roman Reigns, you kind of do get forgotten about on weekly television. I do find it interesting that it was Top Dalla instead of the rest of Hit Row being B-Fab and Deshante the Adonis. I wonder what the plan is for them. And then for example, you look at people like Riddick Moss, Rick Boogs, uh, and Aaliyah, people who really didn't have a place on WWE TV, and it really did seem like creative didn't have much for them. For me personally, it's really sad to see for someone like Riddick Moss, who had just gotten his partnership with his real life, I think, fiance Emma, and they were doing some stuff, and it really doesn't seem like creative had much for him to do outside of the Madcap Moss character in which he would be, you know, poking fun with Baron Corbin and saying dumb jokes. I actually really like the pairing of these two, and Riddick Moss can really go in the ring. Um, for example, he had a really good match with Drew McIntyre, I believe, earlier this year that was extremely well done, and he's a great in-ring performer. I don't know what the hell that whole window thing he would do, like he would draw a window with his fingers and then kick it out on his uh, entrance. Uh, yeah, and again, people wonder why WWE uh, has some creative problems. I think really this is just the first shot in a larger set of releases. Maybe they're going to release people in chunks, who truly knows, but with the new TKO group being uh, established, they are going to have to cut back on their costs because they do have so much talent because you are combining two companies, and unfortunately in mergers like this, these things unfortunately do kind of happen. But I'm curious to see also, like, will the UFC be affected by this? Will they get budget cuts as well? I haven't really heard much on that front. It really does seem like WWE is the one really trying to trim the fat here with the new with this new TKO group. So what do you think about these WWE releases? These are really some talented men and women who are going to go off and do great things in other companies. I could see a lot of them being a benefit to places like Impact or Ring of Honor or even New Japan. So let me know down in the comments. Do you think that this is the end of the releases? Do you think there are more coming? What are your thoughts on these talents being released? Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will keep you updated on this as much as I can. This has been Extreme League Wrestling, and we'll catch you next time.